The guns of Gaza and Israel have gone silent for now. A hard-won and desperately fragile ceasefire is in place on paper. Between Israel and Palestinians have been shelling each other for days and threatening a wider, bloodier war. In Gaza tonight, celebrations as Israel agreed to end airstrikes that have killed more than 160 people. For Israel, a promise of no more rocket fire from Gaza and attempted incursions from there. But on the ground, there are already signs now that the peace may not be holding. So we begin our coverage of the ceasefire with Matt Gutman in Tel Aviv. It took eight bloody days. More than 160 Palestinians killed from Israeli bombardment and six Israelis killed from some 1,500 Palestinian rockets. But tonight, a ceasefire has terrified civilians on both sides, breathing a cautious sigh of relief. The Egyptians, who had worked so feverishly to broker this ceasefire, announced it. And with the American Secretary of State standing beside the new Egyptian foreign minister, a member of the Muslim Brotherhood, surely a potent symbol of the post-Arab Spring Middle East. Now that there is a ceasefire, I am looking forward to working with the foreign minister and others to move this process. In a synchronized statement an hour later in Israel, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu cautiously endorsed the plan, taking pains to thank both Secretary Clinton and President Obama, and blaming Iran for arming Hamas. Hamas has also issued a statement declaring victory and saying, we won this round and Netanyahu lost in his first war ever. In six months' time, we will have more strength and longer range and more accurate missiles. On the Palestinian side, the truce was met with jubilation, celebratory gunfire in the Gaza Strip. On the Israeli side, grim-faced Israeli leaders briefed the country about this deal. And just hours after they did that, nearly two dozen rockets lobbed from Gaza into Israel landed, increasing the skepticism. One Israeli official saying this is quiet for quiet, nothing more, and he doubts it'll last even more than two minutes. And already tonight, Israeli comedians lampooning Israeli leaders for brokering this deal. Terry. Thanks, Matt. A very fragile ceasefire there indeed. But this, this historic ceasefire was signed in Cairo. That's a sign, as Matt pointed out, of the rising influence of a new and democratic Egypt. But the key player in all this was a man who is a hero to many Palestinians and a terrorist to Israelis, the leader of Hamas, Khaled Mashal, a new power player in the world. And ABC's Christian Amanpour is in Cairo. She's got an exclusive interview. Terry Cairo has been the scene of frantic shuttle diplomacy today. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, as well as the U.N. chief, have been here. Now, they will not talk to Hamas because Hamas is a pariah considered by the U.S. and Israel and much of the West as a terrorist organization. So when you hear about the man who the Egyptian president is negotiating with on behalf of Israel, it's this man that I spoke to today, Khalid Mashal. And we had a fiery exchange about civilian casualties, both in Israel and in Gaza, and about why Hamas won't recognize Israel's right to exist. Anyone looking for a sign that the Arab Spring has changed the Middle East can find it here. The ceasefire would not have happened without this man, Khaled Mashal. But for decades, he's been one of Israel's most hated enemies. They've tried to kill him, and they consider him a terrorist. Today, Khaled Mashal was unapologetic for the actions that his group has taken. Is it useful to kill civilians, to create terror on civilians inside Israel? Let me, let me give you the truth. On the 8th of November this month, the Israelis entered Gaza and killed a child. They bear the responsibility. We don't target the civilians. I don't like to shed any, blood, any drop of blood. Do you consider how many Palestinian civilians are being killed because of your actions? It is not because of our action. We are defending our people and our land. Hamas is a militant Islamist party that won the popular vote in Gaza, is gaining popularity in the West Bank, and does not recognize Israel's right to exist. How can I accept Israel? They have occupied my land. I need recognition, not the Israelis.
Mashal is a kind of storied figure in the Middle East because Israelis tried to assassinate him in the 90s in Amman, Jordan. But God saved me when they tried to assassinate me. King Hussein saved you. Allah saved me. Then King Hussein. Seven years later, Mashal became the head of Hamas. In a situation where the Palestinians have for years seemed to lack real leadership and divided against themselves in many cases, Mashal is thought by some to have aspirations of eventually filling the leadership vacuum left with the death of Yasser Arafat. He's not as charismatic as Arafat, but he is a hero to many. What do you want to do for your people? It's endless war. Allah has given me a new life to serve my people, to end the occupation. And such that the settlement ends, and the killing ends, and the aggression ends, and to make peace in the region. But true peace, peace that is not rewarding the occupier, that not oppress the victim. Peace, the kind of peace that precludes occupation and the sh bloodshed. Mashal is thought to have been part of the wing that was advocating a turn away from violence for his group. One question. Can Mashal corral those people within his own camp who've likely been emboldened by the success of the current campaign of rocket attacks on Israel? And another wrinkle, Hamas is not the only group firing rockets from Gaza into Israel. Islamic Jihad has been doing that, and a splinter Palestinian group took responsibility for the bus bombing in Tel Aviv today. So the question is, will Hamas be able to control those people in Gaza and thus stake out a real leadership role? Certainly, Hamas will be held responsible.